Hi everyone, Paul Mann here and welcome to my videos on Practical Python. In this video, I'll show you how to create self-signed certificates in Python to use with TLS or Transport Layer Security encryption. Normally, to use signed digital certificates in Public Key Infrastructure or PKI, you need a device connected to the internet, a valid domain name, and quite often you need to pay a fee to a certificate authority to sign the cert. Now we're going to learn how to create and sign our own certificates without a domain name or paying any fees so that we can implement TLS on our internal servers. So why on earth would we want to create and sign our own certificates? Well, you may just want to secure traffic to a local server on your network that you already trust, but you don't have a domain name or want to buy certs. If you're a developer, you may need to have your development servers emulate your production servers that are running HTTPS. Or you may simply want to know how to set up and configure TLS and don't have a public website or domain. Whatever the reason, I'll show you how to create self-signed certificates with Python and how to install on your server and browser to connect over HTTPS. So for example, we have a server here on our local network that is running web services. It only has an IP address, but we trust this service because it's on our local network and does not provide services to the internet. However, there is some confidential information on the server and our users are accessing it via logins and passwords. Therefore, we want the internal traffic going to the server to be encrypted. First, we create the certificate and the private key in Python on our client computer. Then we'll copy the cert and key to the web server running Apache. We'll configure the server to use our cert and we'll import the cert into our browsers. Finally, we'll test the connection. So let's get started. To create the self-signed certs in Python, we're going to use the cryptography library. We've used the cryptography library before, both for asymmetric and symmetric encryption. But it also has a X509, which is the reference, which is the format for our digital certificates. It also has a reference for this, and we're going to use this to create the certificates. So we're back here in PyCharm, and the first thing we need to do is install the library, and that's with pip, pip install cryptography. To kick off our code, then, we need to bring in some modules and classes from the cryptography library. Looks uh, overwhelming when you see it first, but really uh, everything has its function in the code. So the first one on line one is the date time, and we need that to set the expiration date. So we're going to start from today, and then the time delta would be, say, a year, 365 days. Um, and that's how that's going to be done. The second one is the X509. That's for the, st the digital certificate standard. And the name OID or the name object ID is also part of the cryptography library and that's used to assign names um, to, this, to the cert. It's done in the form of uh, object IDs. The hashes on line four are required to sign the, and, and that's at the end of the day what we're doing here, we're signing our own certificate. And the default backend is just shielding us from some of the complexity of the crypto functions. So rather than us picking out the, the crypto function, for example, OpenSSL or whatever we're using, we use the default backend and let the library figure out which one to use. Essentially, the cryptography library is an interface to these complex crypto functions. And on line six is serialization that's required to save out the private keys and the certs to a file. It essentially converts them, is a mode of conversion out to bytes so that we can save the file out. And the last one on line seven is RSA itself, which we've used before. And we're going to use that to create the public and private key. So when we're creating a cert, the cert is actually a public key with some extra detail on it. And the private key is used to sign it for us. So um, it's, it's very similar to the asymmetric encryption that we've discussed before. The next few lines here are important. The server IP is a variable I created to put the IP address of the server. So I'm using an IP address and that's recommended when we're doing this internally. And then the H name is the host name. In my case, it was CA server. This will be important because if we don't format the certificate correctly, some browsers, especially Chrome, 
will uh, balk and not work, not use HTTPS. So we have to format it correctly. So the server name, the CN name of the cert is going to be the IP address and the host name then will be in the alternate um, names, which we'll see later. The next few lines are the key. Um, this we've done before, not in this fashion, but we've created RSA keys in other videos. Um, <clears throat> this is a little more detailed. We're putting the public exponent. This is another complex in the weeds part of encryption that we don't need to get into, but just keep it at 65537. This is a common value for this. Key size is 2048. And then the back end I discussed earlier is the default. And this will create the public and we'll be able to get the private key from this as well. Now we're going to assign a common name to the certificate. Now, normally this would come with other stuff. If you've ever created a certificate manually, you'll know that you're asked for the organization name, the country code, the state and so on. I'm going to bypass all that and just look at the common name, which I'll use the H name, the host name that I have above, and that'll create the common name of the certificate. For the alternative names, first I'm going to use the host name that we created earlier, the CA server. But I'll also add the IP address as another alternative name. This is important for some browsers like Chrome, where if you don't have this information, it'll generate an error. So now we're going to create this certificate with this certificate builder method from the cryptography library. And the subject and the issuer name are obviously going to be the same because we're signing our own cert here. We get the public key. We'll get a serial number. I picked a random number of 1,000. It's valid beginning now, which is a function from the daytime function that we added earlier. And then it'll be valid for one year, 365 days. We'll add the extension basic constraints true, which is really we're making this a CA, a certificate of authority, even though it's not. But because we're signing this certificate ourselves, we technically are our own certificate authority. Line 37 is the add extensions, and this is for the alternate names. And this is important, as I mentioned earlier. And we'll put the alternate names in, the, in that uh, function. And last, we have the key. We'll sign with our hash to SHA-256, and we'll use the default backends that I mentioned earlier in the code. So that's it for creating the cert. Now we're just going to encode our key and our cert and copy them into variables, my cert, dot, my cert pem and my key pem. And then the next step then, we'll write those two variables out to two files. I named the files test Ubuntu new cert and test Ubuntu new key. So these two files should show up in our directory here when we run this program. And that's it. Now we've created our cert file and our private key. And we need to copy these files to a directory that Apache can see them and read them so that we can connect to the web services over HTTPS. Obviously, to test our connection, we need a device running web services. I'm running Ubuntu server here with Apache. You can verify that Apache is running by running the systemctl status command. Or you could point your browser to the IP address of the device or server and you should see the Apache demo page like this. So I've copied the two files, the key and the cert, to the Ubuntu server under the directory certs. And now I'm going to move and copy these files into the Apache directory. So the first thing I'll do is copy the private key, and I'll use the move command because we don't want the key lying around. So we want to move it to a safe place. And the directory for Ubuntu um, with Apache is Etsy SSL private. So I'm going to move the test Ubuntu new key to that private directory. It might be different if you're using a different version of Linux, um, but a little research and you'll see where to put it. So then I'm going to copy the cert file, the test Ubuntu new cert file, into the Etsy SSL search directory. So we have only one configuration file to modify. It's in the Etsy Apache 2 sites available, default SSL config. So good news, we don't have much to change. It's a big file, but there are only two lines that we're concerned with, and we just want to make sure that the SSL certificate shown here, the file is pointed to our certificate file, and the key file, the private key is pointed to the private key file. And that's it. If you save that, we'll run some commands to enable SSL, and we're all done.
So we have a few simple commands to run here to enable SSL on the Apache server. First one is Apache 2 enable mod SSL. It's already enabled here. And second one is to enable the headers. And also the site. We'll enable the site to use the default config file that we edited. And that's it. If we restart Apache and we don't get any errors, we should be forgetting sudo. We should be good to go. Finally, we need to import the cert into our browser on our client computer. To do that on a Mac, you would go to the keychain and select system. Find the cert file. I have it in my um, PyCharm directory. And when we import that, we'll be prompted for a password a couple of times. And we see an X on the certificate. We have to trust this certificate so that the browser knows that this is a good certificate. Password one more time. And we're ready to test our connection. So if we bring up Safari here and type in the um, IP address under HTTP. We see that we have a connection over HTTPS and this is indeed the cert that we just created. So that's with Apache and um, Firefox is similar. However, Chrome is going to give us a warning message. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of that warning message shortly. But let me just explain what I mean by warning message. You can click through the message and get to the site. It says it's not secure, but it is uh, using SSL or TLS. It's just that it's complaining because it doesn't trust the certificate. So this might be problematic for your users, but I will show you how to get rid of that in our Python script. Chrome fires off that message because it's complaining about an alternate site. And the way to fix this is in our code, we'll put an additional alternate name and we'll append the IP address. Now the IP address, um, and I had to do a lot of research on this, the IP address must be a part of the IP address, the library IP address to work. Um, so you'll have to click import IP address as well. So we'll delete these two files that we had originally and now we'll run our code again and we'll get two new files and we'll copy these to the Apache server and reboot, reload Apache and see if that error message in Chrome goes away. So I've created the new files and copied them back to the certs. I'm going to move the uh, key file just like we did before, which will overwrite the one that's currently there. And then I'm going to copy the uh, cert file, which will overwrite that in the uh, Etsy SSL search directory. We don't need to run any of the configurations again because they're already set. So we just need to restart Apache. And now we have the new cert in there with that additional line we put in our code. So the final step would be to re-import the, um, the, the key, the cert back into the keychain. And just as a precaution, let's delete the old one first. So we'll import the our new and updated key that we just did with the new code. We'll trust that certificate again. And now if we go into Chrome, that error message should be gone away. So I'll bring up Chrome here and I'll do a refresh. 
And as you can see, the warning message has disappeared and it says now that the connection is secure. Keep in mind that for obvious reasons, browsers do not like self-signed certs. So this works today as of the recording of this video. Um, it may change, Chrome may change its settings to not work in the future. Also keep in mind that this can be deceptive for your users on your network if they think that this connection is trusted in addition to encrypted. Um, this, these self-signed certs do not guarantee trust unless you trust the server yourself and it is in your full control. So these are things to be aware of with self-signed certs on a local network. Finally, I want to show you what using TLS over HTTP or HTTPS gives you a sense of security. I have two servers, two Ubuntu servers set up here, each running Apache on AWS Cloud. One has SSL or TLS installed, one does not. So I'll show you what that means in terms of security. So I also have a fake application server set up in each of these websites. Uh, it's really a simple dialog box that you put a name and a password in and hit submit. It doesn't do anything else, but it's here to show how the traffic is protected with HTTPS as a versus HTTP. I'm going to load this application on the non HTTPS or HTTP site first, and I'll run Wireshark in the back background to monitor the traffic. So I log into my fake application here with a username and a fake password, which as you can see, I've tried already. I'll hit submit. We get an error message, but we have submitted the username and password to the site. So when I do a follow on Wireshark on the traffic to that site, I'm only monitoring the traffic to that site. And if I do a stream, I'll see clearly that the password and the username is up on top. So Wireshark was able to sniff the packets going to that web server and track the password and username. So now we'll do the same test on a HTTPS site, same application. Again, we'll log in, I'll put a new password this time just to, before we submit, I will make sure that the Wireshark is tracking the uh, traffic to that server. And I'll hit submit. We'll do a follow. And as you can see, the traffic, the traffic is all scrambled. Um, there's no evidence of passwords or usernames. So this is what using a cert and using HTTPS with TLS gives you on a local system. Um, obviously, it applies to the internet too and, and uh, for PKI systems, but this is why you would do it. So that traffic going to that server cannot be sniffed on the local wire. Well, that's it for writing self-signed certs in Python and configuring them to use with Apache. Uh, the code that I used in this video can be found on my GitHub page at the link below. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks. See you soon.